welcome to Transformative Principle, where I help you stop putting out fires and start leading. I'm your host, Jethro Jones. You can follow me on Twitter at Jethro Jones. Welcome to Transformative Principle. Today, I am excited to have Danny Bauer on the program. I think I've had, I think this is our third or fourth, maybe fifth time we've had you on, Danny. I want to be on your show 100 times. <laughs> 100 or more. times. Yeah. yeah, before okay. I die. All right. Well, uh, let's let's talk more about that. Maybe we can make it happen. If you don't know Danny, then that is a big problem. <laughs> he is a principal development and retention specialist, a best-selling author, host of the two of the world's most downloaded podcasts, and as the chief ruckus maker, he founded Better Leaders, Better Schools in 2015. Uh, well, hey. Welcome to Transformative Principal, Danny. Chato, good to be back. Yeah, it's good to have you. Uh, we, I try to have you on every time you release a book and you're releasing another book and you're going to be mm-hmm. releasing even more books uh, over the coming time. So tell me a little bit about your idea about releasing multiple books over the next couple of years. Well, I always want to experiment, right? And I think that's important for school leaders to adopt a, a curious and experimental sort of framework and worldview, because to me, when you experiment, uh, the result, it doesn't feel like the stakes are as high. You could still innovate, but if you're telling yourself, well, it's an experiment, if it works, then I'm going to keep, you know, trying to fan the flame, so to speak. And if it doesn't work, whatever that means, it's certainly not failure. I don't believe in that because you always learn from mistakes and challenges and obstacles and whatever. So I want to run an experiment that's very aligned, right, to the brand and making a ruckus and challenging the status quo and all this kind of stuff. And so my experiment is this, what sort of publisher in our space in education is putting out books consistently that deliver a result in as few words as possible? That's my goal with all these books. And so I'd have to count it up. I don't have it memorized. I know it's under a hundred, but let's take a look. Yeah, this book, it, uh, Build Leadership Momentum, the first in this series, this experiment, 71 pages. And I've read it already like five times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, know? uh, you do that through the re- revising uh, revision process. But anyways, you could read it in an hour, right? So that's pretty sweet. And the content's there. There's no fluff. It just tells you how to create this entry plan. And so what I've been telling folks too, is if you gift yourself like a three hour deep work block, you can read that book and you can actually create your entry plan and be done. Right. I think that's pretty cool. So that's the experiment I'm running these days. Well, I, the reason why I asked you about that is that I have, uh, so in 2021, I read a hundred yeah. books. And I was like, this hey. is great. I'm reading a hundred books. I'm stoked about it. And then I yeah. looked back over the year and I hit that goal. And I was like, wait a minute, I read all these books. What have I actually implemented from them mm. that I'm missing something? And so did I do anything yeah. with yeah. the information that I got? Did I take good notes and did I do a good job of, of actually doing the stuff that I implemented? And so last year I took a little different approach and I tried to be more focused And then I started Mm -hmm. reading books and I was like, well, what can I actually do with this? And, and I, there wasn't a lot to do. A lot of the books I was reading were about like mindset and shifting, shifting my mind. And they didn't really offer specific practical things to do. And so Mm -hmm. this year I read a book called positive intelligence by Shirzad Sharmin and really awesome Mm -hmm. book, really loved it. And it, uh, I said, I want to actually do the things that are in this. So I joined his coaching program, learning how to improve my positive intelligence. And it's been remarkable. And the thing is, is like, I didn't just, I didn't just read the book and then move on. I read the book, I sat with it and I stayed with it. And I made sure that I actually implemented something. And what I love about your approach here is that you're trying to deliver an actual result. So Let's talk about this book, Build Leadership Momentum. 
What is the actual result that you're trying to deliver with it? Well, it's to build that principle, what I call perfect principle entry plan, right? But I'll, I'll dig into that too. But I'm just curious and uh, just answer honestly, obviously. But did it? Who taught you, if anybody, how to create your principal entry plan back in the day? Uh, nobody except one time my superintendent gave me a 250-page book called "The First 90 Days." I'm sure you've heard of that book. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That so book. That book. In- she gave me that book, and I did not read it because I was like, "This is too much. I'm already mm. overwhelmed. I can't imagine." So I made my entry plans all by myself and just figured out what they would do, which meant that I was flying by the seat of my pants. Yeah. Because I don't same, make same here. Like <laughs> <laughs> same here. No, nobody ever taught me. Right. And the more I talk to school leaders, the more I hear. Yeah. Nobody's ever shown me an entry plan. Like we know we need to start the year off well and, there's all these things that we need to do. Maybe there's like a checklist or something, but not a not a robust right plan that you could actually execute. One so before I even wrote this book, it was like a, a five five or six day online challenge where people signed up for free. People that want to hear from me, and I, I coached them for like sixty to ninety minutes each day for a week. Right, how to build this entry plan? They loved it. And so much so I'm like, oh, okay, like maybe this should be a book then. And it became one. But one of those principles is named John Unger. And he is a principal down in Arkansas. He told me prior to this, because I said, like, what did you used to do? He said, well, I used to just, you know, stay up at night, worried and stressed out about the million things that need to happen. And he said, honestly, Danny, after you taught me this framework, all the stress was gone. It's like, wow, what an endorsement. So I sort of tell people too, if you want a stress-free start to the school year, do the entry plan, right? And so uh, that's that's pretty cool. But yeah, nobody ever taught me. I can't believe that it's such like a gaping hole, right, in in principal development. Uh, But that's a fact. And now the book's out there. So yeah, I read I read that ninety day book. You know, certainly influenced me. Um, I did a lot of research to see are there any other books on this topic. And I found some by accident, right? You really, really, really have to search, but they don't come up when you type in entry plan book in Amazon. So that was interesting to say the least at first, but then there is, there is a new one. I forget the title, uh, but it was done by some Harvard researchers too. It's focused on equity, which is an awesome focus. But to your point, it's like 300 something pages, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be dense and it's going to be fairly, you know, like academic and, Listen, you, you know how I talk and, and how I write. It's easy to digest, right? The ideas are big, uh, but I break it down in a simple way. Again, because we're you and me, we're in the results business. Yeah. So if someone has is already out of school, is this book not really worth it to pick up then? I would say it depends, right? It depends. I, I would ask that veteran school leader, what support have you received, right? Uh, I don't know of a system like this, but I'm sure they exist for sure. But if, if there's systems where uh, there's some really intentional coaching and mentorship around entry plans, if entry plans that really are rocking in the system are shared freely across all the campuses to say, like, this is the way, right? Like the Mandalorian, and then yeah. <laughs> use this to as a model, uh, then you probably don't need the book. But what I suspect is most school leaders you know, never received that coaching or mentorship or template. And so for sure, if you just got your first principal position, get the book, you need to for $15, it might be the best $15 you ever spent. And then for veterans that haven't had that coaching mentorship, or they're just looking for a leadership edge, maybe they get one idea that makes their start of the school year that much better. So that's how I'd answer that. So one of the things I want to talk about is Chapter two talks about communicating how much you care. And Mm. um, this is, you have, you have a series of questions in there uh, that, uh, that I want to just go over and I'm going to read them uh, here for you. This is basically the, the inner monologue of questions that we ask. And you, what you say in there is 
Um, when we try to deliver this information during a staff or department meetings, we tend to get sidetracked by another challenge of focus on ourselves. We're all human and we're all highly sensitive to the way we're being perceived by the people around us. Are they listening? Am I being funny enough? Do I have spinach in my teeth? So-and-so didn't say hi to me. Why hasn't you know who shown up yet? Is she ignoring me? This inner, log, inner monologue distracts us from focusing on the people in front of us. Um, and, and then you go and talk about the people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And mm. that that is a, a cliche, but it is true uh, that people do need to know that you care. So how do you get out of your own head as a principal, especially in the beginning when everybody is literally judging you on what you do in your first staff meeting, first time with them, all that kind of stuff? How do you counsel people to get out of their own head with that? Because everybody has those doubts. Everybody has that imposter syndrome. What's your advice there? Uh, there's a number of ways we could take it. Like prior to it, you can visualize it going really, really well, you know, and sort of practice and practice makes perfect type of thing. So that's one way potentially. You could also think about like the worst case scenario too. And the whole staff starts throwing tomatoes at your head and <laughs> <laughs> you get, you get smashed. Cause that's not, you know, it's not never going to happen. So yeah. Cause nobody brings tomatoes you, to school planning to throw them at the principal and staff meeting. Not these days, but wait till 2024. I heard <laughs> principals are in for quite quite a surprise. Yeah. But, you know, I, 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 I like to sometimes envision like worst case scenarios, not to be doom and gloom, but because I prepare, right? And sort of stoic philosophy, they, they definitely embrace that, uh, that process too. They called it negative visualization. But then when you hit something hard, it's like, oh, this is actually kind of easy and it's not as bad as I imagined. And I think a lot of people could relate to that is as tough as you ever think that thing might be, it's, it's actually not never that bad as you envision it. So you could, you could do those couple of things. Um, and then I, I don't know how to get somebody to release it. Like this is where I think coaching is quite helpful. I know the question to ask is what would it take for you to hold this first staff meeting or whatever with an open hand, right? To not be so attached to the outcome and all that kind of stuff. It'd be very interesting and revealing how a school leader might answer. And from there, we could create a personalized process. But notice in that question too, Jethro, I said like the outcome, right? And so I would also encourage a school leader to not obsess so much about outcomes because those are never in your control but the inputs, right? So all those things to lead up to the staff meeting before the people are judging you, whatever's in your control, are you giving your personal best? And if you are, then you got to let the cards fall as they may. Uh, you and I both have had some challenging experiences within systems, and that just happens no matter how much you prepare, how you know positive you are, and, and how much of an impact you want to have. Sometimes you just kind of get a, a rough hand dealt to you too. And so part of that is picking yourself up and learning from those challenging experiences. So is that helpful or should we keep jamming on that? I think that that's good. I think the key piece here is that focusing on the inputs is mm. really the only place that you can do anything about. Like no matter how good your entry plan or is or whatever you're trying to do in your school, no matter how hard you're working at it, you can only control yourself and what you're actually doing. And you can't control how it's received. You can't control how, um, how it's implemented. You can't control whether or not it actually works. You know, um, one of the yeah. things that you talk about on here is, is focusing on academic achievement and you can focus on that all you want, but you as the principal are pretty far removed from that. And so, you're not the one there teaching the kids. And ironically, we, we, we feel like we have to do so many other things, but we recognize very readily that the principal can't teach all the kids, all the subjects in every school. And, right. and yet that's, that's what we try to do with other things. Um, so, so I, I appreciate that. What else would you say about focusing on the inputs as you're putting together this 90 day entry plan? What would you say would be your, the, the inputs you should really be focusing on? Uh, well, you know, I think there's, there's like five 
categories within the framework. So I don't know if that is exactly what you're looking for, but those categories, you know, I, there's a common theme in, in my work. It always starts with you, the individual school leader. And so there's a lot there. And something just to touch on is what I call the ruckus maker mindset tool, just the fundamentals, right? So you're eating, you're sleeping, moving, meditating, unplugging. And again, all those things are under your control, right? So if you're getting enough rest, right, putting good fuel in your body and all this kind of stuff, then you're going to probably be showing up just with the energy, right, and vitality on campus that is uh, inspirational and attractive, right, and it's going to lead to results. Uh, the other parts of the framework are communication, uh, academics, culture, and operations. And so, you know, those are some of the big, broad inputs that you could focus on, and, and we could get as detailed as you'd like, but at least people know the framework. Yeah. Um, talk about why you think operations should be last in this instead of first. Yeah. Because nah, so my perspective and and what I hear from a lot of people is, uh, teachers and uh, principals included is that if if you don't have that uh, the security and predictability of the operations down first, then mm -hmm. you're going to uh, people aren't going to feel safe. They're not going to feel like they're trusted, or you trust, or that they can trust you. They're going to feel like the wheels are falling off. But why does it come last here? You know, part of it is everything else builds on top of each other and leads to that piece, right? And what I find, like you said, is that school leaders sort of default to the operational side, the day-to-day -day just operating a building and making sure it's running. And it's so easy to get there. But if you think about uh, the significant and legacy type work you want to do as a school leader on campus, it's not found probably in operations. It is just, it's basically the permission to play sort of level, as Pat Lencioni would call it. It's like, it needs to happen, but it's not 100% like significant, if that makes sense. The things that people will remember you for, the fingerprint, the mark that you leave on a campus in its culture is found in the other four parts. And so I know that the default is people to jump in on operations first. So I put it last because I know people are going to get there anyways. I even taught this entry plan thing to people live and I saw them do this anyways. They went to operations. I said, what about you? You know, what do you need this school year? And you work with tons of school leaders, right? Uh, I've supported a bunch as well. And leaders get tired. They get burnt out right? They feel like they've been chewed up and spit out by the system. Many wonder, can I do it for even another year? Well, you certainly can't if you just live in operations and stay there all the time, just grinding the day to day, you know? So that's why, that's why I flipped the paradigm. And, you know, that's my approach. Yeah. I, I'm glad you said that because the, it, the the thing you said was significant and legacy work is not found in operations. And yeah. it, even if we are not quote unquote egotistical, we still want to leave a mark and want the work that we do to be left behind. Yes. And if, even if we do something that is amazing in operations that could leave a mark, if those other four things aren't in place, as soon as we leave, that thing is going to leave as well and nobody's going to stick with it. 100%, yeah. And also 100% of leaders that I know got into you know, the principalship, assistant principalship, because they wanted to have a bigger impact, right? So if you want to have that impact, you got to play in those other four parts of the framework and get to operations. So you get you get there for sure. I'm not saying ignore it. I'm just saying it's the last thing you focus on. Yeah. I think the other thing, um, this goes back to the desire for contr control that people focus on operations because they think that's something that they can control better. What's your yeah. response to that? Mm, maybe. I mean, I think you can certainly create strong systems, right? Uh, you can create processes on a campus, that kind of thing that could be taught to anybody on the street coming in, like saying, 
this is the way we do it here at transformative principle, for example. Um, but, you know, the outcomes, again, are very difficult to control. So, yeah, that's flip the paradigm, slow things down, put yourself first, like you're a worthy investment. If you're in it for the long haul, right, if you're playing a longer game, this is just this is the approach of sustainability. If you don't want burnout, right, and you want an abundance of energy, you know, this is the way to prepare. And to be clear, right, I said you could read the book in an hour, gift yourself three hours of deep work time. So now you have two to create your entry plan, at least a draft. Operations is a part of that within the two hours. So it's not like you don't get to it until November. No, yeah. you, get, you get to it before school. You get to it on day one, first week and all that kind of stuff. It's just in your thinking, right? The layers of the onion, so to speak. It's you, communication, academics, culture, operations. You get to it. It's just the last part. Yeah, yeah. I I, I like that approach. Um, also talk about um, how you how you broke it up into things before school starts, first day of school, first day of staff, yeah. first day of school, uh, first month. Like, what are you thinking around that? For sure. And that's where that book you mentioned, the first 90 days influenced me the most, right? So uh, the way the book, I guess, is set up in the process is, is a similar model where you have before the school year starts, and I call that setting the stage. Then you have the first day of school, and you really want to focus on that first full day because that is an incredible opportunity that you never will get back, and you really just want to have a, obviously, start, strong start to the school year in an awesome first day. Week one, to me, is all about focusing on relationships. I don't know about you. I'm sure you did, but told your staff, hey, you don't have to get to the assessments and evaluation and curriculum you know, take a week, at least a week minimum to build relationships. And it's back to the cliche, right? People don't care how much you know until you know how much you care. But it's true. It's true. And it's true not only for teachers and students. It's true for the principal building relationships with all stakeholders that first week. Uh, and then in month one, I call it take it all in. So it's a lot of listening and learning and observing. Month two is about vision and goals. And so now you're really introducing like the direction right over the next three years, let's say, and uh, the goals that you want to hit. And then month three is really about progress and planning. So you're reviewing uh, what you've been able to accomplish, you know, within the first 90 days, and then make adjustments where needed to do it again, do it all over again. Yeah. So what are the 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 challenges that people face when they're going through the book of of actually getting the entry plan done? and making it something meaningful? Well, so there's there's a filled out template which uh, focuses and aligns to things that we teach within the book. So for example, you know, the filled out template might say, hey, fill out your ruckus maker mindset tool to make a plan over the next 90 days. And in month three, you know, you might be reviewing that tool to see how you're doing and what adjustments will be made. So one of the challenges is, you know, it's it's connected to the content, um, but it's it's not that it would be impossible to create a universal like here's your 90 days, right? Mm -hmm. Like for your campus, each campus is different in the needs and you know the the students that are served and whatever, and so there's some big buckets, right? And uh, suggestions, uh, invitations to consider what to include in your plan but it's not going to do the work for you. So if you're not willing to roll up your sleeves also, don't buy the book. Like you're not going to get the results if you're not going to do the work. I love to say ideas are great, but not the greatest. And that's because action is the best, right? You need to implement the ideas. And that's why the book's so short to deliver that result. But then you need to, you know, I'll get you to whatever they say, the five yard line or whatever. We're in the red zone to use an American metaphor, football. Mm -hmm. And if you want to score the touchdown, like you gotta, you gotta finish the job there. Um, I think the other challenges too would be uh, not blocking off time to like do deep thinking, strategic thinking about it. Another challenge and mistake would be to do it all on your own, you know, uh, I think a principal could create a draft, but then bring it to your team to see what adjustments, you know, you're just a person, you make mistakes, you might've missed something. 
so that would be another challenge if you just do it all on your own. And then speaking of all on your own, you know, you support school leaders in group settings, and so do I. So I would I would say get yourself surrounded by other school leaders that are really effective and super smart and innovative that can push you, challenge you, ask great questions, uh, help you not miss anything and really build the perfect principal entry plan. So I think those are some of the challenges. Um, just make sure you take action. It'd be so silly to read the book, create a plan, and then get into the day-to-day -day busyness and be like, oh, abandon ship, you know? Yeah. And some people will do that, but that's a, oh, so here's an example. Would you like an example? Yes, Jeffrey? please. So it's not school related. It's Danny Bauer related, but I have a system for completing tasks, knowing what I need to work on and just getting stuff done. And generally people know me as somebody who gets a lot of things done, right? It's pretty pr productive mm -hmm. and efficient. And then I don't know why, maybe it's because just like desiring more analog solutions or something. I started like creating to do's on paper and sticky notes versus, you know, how I manage stuff online. And all of a sudden I kind of had three systems going at once and I abandoned what always worked for me. And yeah. I felt so stressed out. I felt like I was drowning, felt like a loser because I wasn't getting stuff done like I usually do. And once I said, oh, I've created these new systems, how silly, uh, and went back to the old way that I always did it and was successful for me, everything's normal now again. <laughs> yeah. So I would say, right, like, it's really easy. Oh, let me read this. Let me read that, blah, 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 blah. And then you're like, you fracture your focus. You know, you're pulled in a million different directions. So if you do the work to read and create the entry plan, then implement it and ignore the rest of the noise, if that makes sense. Yeah. How do you suggest people ignore the noise? Because the noise is very loud and it often involves teachers, parents, students, uh, supervisors, superintendents, school boards saying, this is what you should be doing. How do you turn all that off when all those stakeholders do matter and we want to, to help them find success? Yeah. Well, I would say involve those stakeholders earlier in the process so that they have voice on the plan and just let people know once, once the train is out of the station, so to speak, right. There's no slowing it down. And this is the plan we're going to execute and have some strong boundaries around there. Um, you could, you know, saying no could be hard for principals. So you might say something like, oh my gosh, super important stakeholder. I would love to include that in the entry plan. But as you know, you know, you were invited and participated in creating our 90 day entry plan. We're going to execute that with fidelity. Like nobody's ever executed an entry plan before. What I can promise you is that even though it's a no for the first 90 days, I think this is a great idea that we could look to incorporate in the next 90 days. And, you know, to me, that is like the punchline of the book. Uh, the fact that you do an entry plan. So we have, we have all the school leaders, very few coached mentored have a template to create the entry plan. Even fewer have had that and have an entry plan and even fewer have that entry plan execute it and then do it again. You could do it four times throughout the year. And that's the best part. Like it never stops. You now have the framework for sustainable school success. So maybe that should be another book. <laughs> it, there you it, go. It, well, all right. Can I be super silly? You could edit yes. this out if you don't like it anyways. So um, there's, I'd have to look up the title, but I verified this is true. So the title is generally like, what men know about what female, like what women want uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, intercourse and sex and this kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So people open up the book, it's blank. Yes. It's totally <laughs> blank. And so I'm just laughing because maybe sustainable school success is step one, by build leadership momentum. Step two, do that process four times in the year, right? Like, and it could yeah. just be one page. So- Feel free, yeah. feel free to cut that if it's not good for no. the show. <laughs> it's all good. I have heard of that book and yes, it's funny, but, but it's also like it, it, 
the the profound truth there is that it requires a a blank slate and recognizing that you don't know anything to then yeah. start to create and understand something and and there are parallels there as well but the thing is is like you you've gone to school like here's what mm. i hear all the time from principals my okay. master's program didn't prepare me for this and that's what i hear all the time and the reality is is that there there's very there's very little that you can uh, that you can learn in your classes to say this is what you actually do what i love about your book is that it actually says here's a way to do it and bring in all these stakeholders and say this is what we're doing what do you think is this going to work and do you think this is the right direction now when you're aligned with your superintendent amazing things can happen mm -hmm. because they know where you're going and what you're trying to do then if you're aligned with your teachers then that just impacts and expounds and i i've seen principals go into schools and not get anything done because the principal was over here and everybody else was over in these other areas and they could not get in an agreement but when everybody's aligned and knows what you're doing then amazing things can happen and it just takes a little bit of communication and that's mm -hmm. that's really what it comes down to uh and and then once you communicate even if you're not aligned you at least know that before the school year starts and maybe you can you know decide maybe this isn't the right district maybe i shouldn't be a principal here because they want us to focus 100 on this and i can't wrap my head around how this over here is not a better solution mm -hmm. so i i think those are Good important point. um yeah. So where do we get the book and what do we get if we, what bonuses do we get? Cause I know you're all about doing some great stuff for people who buy your books. I try to do that, you know, set, set self apart a little bit and that kind of thing. Um, but you could get the book if you just go to buildleadershipmomentum.com and uh, that will redirect you to the better leaders, better schools website where you can purchase. Uh, well, you, you could choose, you could do, excuse me, one copy, five copies, or 25. Uh, or if you're a system and you want to order more than 25, I'll give you a deal so shockingly good, it will blow the socks right off your feet, okay? What? Yes, yeah. <laughs> Why that? I don't know what that is, but I, I mean, I'll just, I'll give you an incredible deal. All right, so if you buy one copy and you live in the States or Canada, I will autograph that book, drop it in the mail, snail mail, and it will show up. Uh, by the way, if you don't want the print book or you leave, live outside U.S. and Canada, you can get the ebook and the audio book, no problem, and that'll get automatically delivered to you. Uh, for one copy, another bonus is uh, how to end the year, like a pro training, right? So here we are, we're recording at least May 15th, and so definitely people are winding down the school year. Great time to think about that and think about the start to next year, uh, and so there's a video training there. Uh, you get the fillable and blank PDF that's talked about within the book, and you get something which I'm pretty excited about. I do have a first year principal checklist that goes for all 12 months of the year uh, and is fairly detailed. So uh, that I think is super helpful, specifically first year principals, but I think veterans will learn some stuff too. So that's the one copy. If you get five copies, you get all that stuff plus a 30 minute coaching call with yours truly, but that's limited to the first 20 uh, book buyers. And then if you get 25 copies, you get everything I talked about. So all the stuff plus the coaching call. And what I'm doing is a VIP day with me, with where I live, uh, August 12th in Syracuse, New York. You've been there. You've been there as a VIP. I, I brought you to a great pizza place, right? Oh yeah. It we, was wonderful. We saw the sites. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like that, except there'll be more than just Jethro. And uh, we'll do a morning mastermind session uh, live with people um, somewhere downtown. Uh, we're going to go. There's a beautiful state park called Green Lakes. It's so gorgeous. So we'll go around there, just do a little bit of hiking. And uh, I think, you know, I'm, I'm getting my two year. Uh, I'm in a program, a two year mindfulness and meditation certification program. So I'm going to lead a guided meditation in nature, which I think will be really cool for people. And then in the afternoon, we're just going to do individual coaching sessions. Uh, because this is only for 10 or fewer people. So a lot of individual time. And then my favorite uh, Syracuse brewery is called Buried Acorn. 
And so we're going to finish with a celebratory drink there for whoever wants to do that. And uh, yeah, that's for the 25 copy buyers. So buildleadershipmomentum.com. Awesome. Well, uh, those sound pretty amazing for any of those, those bonuses. And buying 25 copies is only 375 bucks. So that's- Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you were going to do a VIP day with me in person, like that would be thousands yeah. of dollars, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, even if we just coach one session virtually, that's like, well, just, it's a great deal. Let's just say that. That okay, is a great that's the deal. Point. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I hope to see some people there. Yeah, no kidding. All right. Buildleadershipmomentum.com. Danny, as always, it's a pleasure to have you on. And I appreciate all you do for school leaders and most importantly for your friendship. I don't know if people know this, but you and I talk like every two weeks regularly. Yeah. And it yeah. is a highlight of, of my week all the time. And, yeah. and I just really appreciate you. And what people uh, probably don't know is um, that those kinds of relationships are so worthwhile. If you don't have a friend mm. that you're talking with regularly like that, um, especially I, I got a, I got a text from somebody the other day and they're like, Hey, Jethro, do you mind? Like we're competitors. Do you mind if I send some people to your thing and, and see how that works? And I was like, competitors, I think we're more collaborators than anything. If we're in the mm -hmm, same space, mm -hmm. helping school principals, we are collaborators. And, and yeah. that is how you and I, since 2016, seriously, that's when we, <laughs> when we first met and talked on the phone yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and we both were like, kind of like shy and like, do I, do I tell everything to this guy? And now we're like sending stuff to each other regularly to to help ourselves improve so uh i yeah. just think that's turned into a beautiful thing over these last six seven years and I'm grateful for that for, uh, sure. for that friendship so thank you yeah no of course man i feel the same way the only thing you don't have access to is my bank account and social security number at this point <laughs> <laughs> um, i know you have a plan so maybe one day maybe one right. day you'll you'll get those <laughs> we'll see. We will see. All right, man. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. A pleasure. Thanks for having me.